How's it going, everybody? This is my watch, Nate. Out on a little walk around the neighborhood. It's cold, but it's not too cold for this time of year. Days are really short, though, so it's a little uh, depressing. Is it okay to say that? It's a little bit depressing. Not quite the uh, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining level of uh, cabin fever just yet, but kind of feel it coming on anyway so uh i just thought i'd touch base with everybody it's uh just a short one i'm gonna keep it short today just out for a walk and uh like i said it's cold so my lips will probably start freezing up pretty soon and i won't be able to talk anymore so not quite that bad but i got a couple uh shorts i did on uh i just take some clips from from my uh recent podcast on uh, Elon Musk um, and you know what's behind his calls for a carbon tax and uh, um, how he made his profit off of Tesla and it actually kicked off a little bit actually YouTube actually gave me a few views on those shorts um, so, you know I gathered up a, a half a dozen or so subs see that's what happens when I actually get unique viewers on my channel that's why they try to do their best to uh, keep anybody from uh, seeing my channel and my videos. But all the time I pour into them. But I just wanted to follow up with some, uh, I don't know, it's just what, what's been on my mind. I got so many of these. And I guess it makes sense. People searching for Elon Musk are probably, for the most part, regular uh, fanboys and fangirls. I think he's the world's messiah. You know, billionaire savior come to save us all from the uh, evil globalist, right? He's one of us. He's one of our guys. Um, despite the fact that, like I said in my podcast, you know, he's repeatedly called for a carbon tax. He's repeatedly called for universal income. Um, you know, as I also said, he's a lifelong Democrat, called himself a liberal. And just a little bit over a year ago, Decided to, you know, have a change of heart, coming to God moment, even though he hasn't because he's not at all religious, even though he sports a Baphomet um, goat head on his uh, Halloween costume. And he's worn in the past the Pluribus Unum uh, New World Order um, suit coat at one of his you know, fancy occasions, some ball that he went to or something like that. Yeah, they love their little uh, messaging, don't they? Putting out that little cute uh, symbolism now and then. Just so we have enough of a uh, breadcrumb to chew on. And I think it is part of the uh, spiritual plan that, you know, there are, there are rules that even the uh, fallen one has to abide by, and that is... You know, they have to let their plans be known so that God's people have no excuse um, when it comes to whether or not they are deceived or whether or not they love the truth enough to embrace the truth and to, when you embrace the truth, you must hate the lie, right? Um, so not only, not only all that, but Musk is also... Um, pouring his millions into the development of what he at one point called summoning the demon of AI. And he also uh, co-created or co-founded, I'm not sure whichever it was, the uh, chat GPT, which was kind of like an open um, AI, basically, for the internet. And with all the uh, kind of Pandora's box of problems that comes with that new technology, right? which will fit right into the plan of, uh, you know, the uh, UN Agenda 2030 goals of having everybody um, given a digital ID at one point, which fits into Elon Musk's plan of converting Twitter or X into a China model everything app like WeChat, which, you know, they've already changed their user 
agreement, uh, user policy, to include the collection of biometric data on their own users, as well as, you know, AI learning being turned on their own users as well, on that free speech mecca that is uh, X, right? <clears throat> Why am I so skeptical of Elon Musk? Maybe because his talk doesn't match with his actions, right? Follow the money, right? I mean, talk is cheap. But you know, when he says that he's expecting a red wave, it only makes sense, you know? I mean, do you wanna be on the losing side? Do you wanna be on the opposing side when the pendulum sways to the other extreme? Um, or is it more wise as a businessman, which Elon is, to uh, be ahead of the trend, right? To not be left out, not be labeled one of the uh, woke corporations that everybody on the right, the rising majority, is uh, calling out and boycotting, right? This makes wise business sense to me. Um, but yeah, so I get so many people, look at that sunset, by the way, isn't that beautiful? I cannot complain about living up here in the mountains, even in the wintertime, you know, even in the cold, dreaded time of the year up here in the Colorado Rockies. Um, you know, I can't complain about it, it's still beautiful. It's fairly peaceful, you know, compared to living down in the chaos of the city. <clears throat> Crime and corruption and depravity and shootings going on every day in Denver. And yeah, you can't complain. Traffic and the noise. But the reason I bring this up was because I had so many comments on those little video shorts that we're still pro Elon, right? I mean, willing to excuse the fact that he, you know, the only way that Tesla up until within the last, I think, year or two actually began to make its own profit, the only way they were capable of making any profit was by charging more successful automakers um, carbon credits, basically. And at the same time, he promotes a guy like Millet of uh, Argentina when he says in a video, which Elon Musk uh, retweeted in a video interview, this guy calls out social justice and uh, how they redistribute the wealth uh, to pay for all these you know, social justice programs. Well, you know, I'm pretty sure that's pretty much the exact same thing um, that Tesla was doing make that company successful redistributing the wealth the you know the profits of other companies under this completely globalist agenda of uh, carbon credits which Elon Musk has repeatedly called for and he's never renounced that view right repeatedly said that we need um, a carbon tax and at one point even tried to pitch that idea to Biden and that was even too extreme for Biden. So how, do, how does that make Elon exactly a conservative again, folks? <clears throat> you see, what they're doing in my mind is uh, redefining what it means to be a conservative, right? And of anybody, you know, who's done more to popularize the idea of self-driving cars, electric vehicles, which ultimately will be used to strip us away of our autonomy and our ability to uh, travel, our right to travel. When it's tied in with all this uh, digital ID, social credit score system, uh, carbon, tr carbon tracking systems, right? Like uh, one guy I talked to the WEF brought up in, in relation to uh, CBDCs, digital currency. Yeah, everybody can be allotted a certain amount of credit, uh, carbon credit, to, you know, take a certain amount of drive, take a certain amount of vacation every year. But if you exceed that, you know, you, despite the fact that 
top 28 right now where you know we have people like bill gates flying on the private jets using up more carbon than any one of us would use in a in a year um yeah we're all supposed to be concerned about our you know it's this it's this collective dark age mindset this religion this religion of gaia um this new neo-pagan religion that's uh they're trying to push in the name of science we're all supposed to have this like guilt this blood guilt on our hands right for all the damage that we've done to the future generations you know the earth cries out under the weight of all of the horrible sins that we've committed right as a uh, consumers which is what all of these same transnational globalist corporations turned us into in the first place right isn't that the ideal the ideal consumer that just gobbles up goods all day and works nine to five to pay for all the uh, luxuries all the trinkets that they buy from the merchants outlined in revelations 18 you know revelation 18 i get that mixed up sometimes but uh yeah so they, they create the beast they create us little monsters uh, with our ravenous appetites and then uh they penalize us all and you know burden us all with the guilt of this new um mother earth religion um with a concept that you know it's just our human activity on the earth that does damage to god's creation basically but it's never of course put in the context of the true god of the bible right yahweh um it's always like this nefarious uh is that the right word not nefarious uh nebulous idea of a uh, again like an earth religion neo-paganism blended with science right where they concoct the numbers i was reading an article today about how they were claiming that human activity man it's in the billions of uh, tons of carbon every year and and i've yet to see an article that actually explains that lays it all out you know they have all these hypotheticals about you know how many trees are cut down and uh you know cars and everything else but i've yet to read an article that actually outlines like bit by bit how they come up with this data because uh some of the articles i was reading you know they're trying to prove or disprove the idea the popular notion that uh volcanic activity pumps out far more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere than human activity well if you think about it you know there's dozens of active volcanoes around the earth continually spewing out um gases into the atmosphere massive quantities right i mean the earth is a huge uh living machine right but we're to believe that petty little man these little microscopic specks on the surface of this huge globe uh contribute far more than uh, geothermal activity right <clears throat> in any case so it's like any other kind of quasi pseudoscience uh they just kind of make up the numbers to justify the measures the, the political legislation that they want to implement in order to you know strip away ever more and more of our freedoms and liberties um and so I don't know how you can divorce Elon Musk with the rest of the uh, a globalist agenda when he stands for everything that the West stands for, that Bill Gates stands for. I mean, the guy I put out on another podcast went in business with Bill Gates to convert his Tesla factories into mRNA micro factories. Okay, guys? <clears throat> he wants to brain chip people. Transhumanism, right, guys? It's... <laughs> Everything Klaus Schwab stands for. This guy's just rebranded it, repackaged it, made it look cool, right, for the kids, and uh, apparently sold the majority of so-called conservatives on the right, at least from what I get in my feed on uh, Twitter or X. Maybe it's biased. I mean, that's what I see continually. And then when I put out a couple shorts about Elon exposing how much of a hypocrite he is, uh, you know, I get a, plenty of blowback from... Uh, from the viewers um, criticizing me for daring to criticize their uh, little golden calf, you know, their their uh, Tony Stark, you know, Marvel comic book superhero, come to save us all from our, our enemies that apparently stand for everything that Elon Musk stands for as well. So I just fail to get the logic, folks, but I'm 
I've never been one to, you know, go with the grain, I guess, you know, if I, if I see something um, that stands out as BS in my mind, then I'll call it out as BS. And I'm not concerned about losing subscribers. I'm not concerned about gaining friends or any of that stuff on social media. I'm just here to speak my mind and tell the truth as I see it. Little kid up here sounds a little upset. Um, sounds like a little bit like one of those comments on those videos about Elon. <clears throat> In any case, yeah, Cuba's having a meltdown back there apparently. Um, I know you guys didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to hear that, but uh, yeah, so. <clears throat> You know, people just, the only thing I ask is that people just try to be honest with yourselves. Stop being so easily deceived by the next slick talking con man that comes around and promises you the moon. Um, you know, I swear they rely on the short attention span of their audience because, you know, in my lifetime, I've seen it come and go so many times. These token, phony, Hope and change politicians promising to make everything right. And, you know, at the end of their short stint in office, uh, you know, they always back away from their promises, right? As soon as they get into office, they uh, do a full 180 and do everything opposite of what they promised they would do. And, uh, yeah. There's a lot of false prophets. There's a lot of false promises. You know, there's a lot of hopium going around out there today. And I think it's just a sign in my mind of the desperation that people have just for somebody, anybody, right? To come save them. I was thinking of this in biblical times from a biblical perspective. The Jewish people under the oppression of Rome, right? When they wanted... Some guy to come save them from the oppression, from the, you know, the, the Roman Empire was like likened to the Iron Empire because they would just grind everybody down. They were hard as, hard as iron and uh, they wouldn't mess around, right? I mean, that's what they would literally do. They would stake, Jesus wasn't the only one that was staked to a cross. Um, they were brutal. And the Jewish people, God's people, just wanted somebody to save them from the oppression, um, from their oppressors, right? They were under the iron rule of the Roman Empire. And I think the world has arrived at the same state again today, toward the end times. And people have the same mindset. You know, they want, they want a tyrant, you know? We have no king but Caesar, right? That is what they're saying to God. You know, they don't want a uh, soft-spoken, they don't want a, uh, they don't want a candidate like Jesus. They want a Barabbas, right? They want to elect a criminal, um, a popular criminal at that. Um, anything but Jesus to rescue us from our oppressors. And it's just this state of desperation that I think just makes everybody cling to the next shiniest thing comes around promising us um, save us from our captivity anyway this is why we need God folks this is you know in my mind as a Christian this is the biggest reason why we need God this what this nation really needs is to uh, have a living walking talking relationship with our creator um, to get right internally before we expect results externally, right? I mean, you can't vote for a Messiah. You have to accept the free gift of salvation from the one true Savior of this world. This world has fallen, you know, and, and currently, you know, we're not living in, this is not heaven, this is not paradise, never will be. This nation will never go back to some kind of utopia, some kind of idealized concept of a America, right? Um, good old days, right? Unfortunately, you know, the Bible, Bible prophecy says that things will get worse and worse. And it will appear as if all hope is lost. You know, the earth itself will sway back and forth like a drunkard. 
we won't be able to even, you know, have faith on the ground in which we stand. And the only thing that's going to get us through these hard times is our an active, living, breathing relationship with our Creator, who, you know, has told us all these things in advance, you know, so we're not afraid, so that we know the times in which we live, and we can look up for our redemption draws nigh, right? Anyway, so that's my, I guess, uh, New Year's message for everybody out there. Appreciate everybody. God bless. Stay tuned. Stay in touch. You know, I got plenty more ideas up here ticking away in the cranium. Uh, a lot of show ideas. I just got to get the time. Meanwhile, my hand is frozen. It's starting to hurt. It's getting chillier and chillier as further I walk here. Um, almost back. Anyway, God bless everybody. I watch Nate. Till next time. Appreciate everybody out there. Have a happy new year, and uh, catch you next time. Next time, watch Nate signing out.